Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll derive equation of input impedance for a transmission line. To derive equation of input impedance, you need to take reference of my last video in which I have explained few basic fundamentals. Like if you have seen that video, then in that I have explained you voltage and current equation of transmission line. Voltage equation is V1 e to the power minus gamma z plus V2 e to the power plus gamma z. Where this V1 e to the power minus gamma z that belongs to incident signal and V2 into e to the power plus gamma z that belongs to reflected signal. And current equation is I is equals to I1 e to the power minus gamma z plus I2 into e to the power plus gamma z. Where this I1 term that is there for incident signal and this I2 term that is there for reflected signal. As this V1 and I1 that is there with respect to incident signal, we are replacing this signal as per V1 is equals to VI and I1 is equals to II and V2 and I2 that is therefore reflected signal. So we are replacing V2 by VR and I2 by IR. With this equation, what we will be doing is we will be identifying equation of voltage and current at load side and at supply side. At load, we are considering reference. So Z is equals to zero and length of transmission line is L. So at supply side, if you go in this direction, then Z is equals to minus L. So to get voltage and current at load side, we will be substituting Z is equals to zero. To get voltage and current at load, we will be substituting Z is equals to zero. So in these two equations, if you substitute Z is equals to zero, then this equation that will become VL and IL that will be as per VL is equals to VI plus VR and IL is equals to IR plus II. And to get source voltage and source current, we need to substitute Z is equals to minus L. If you place Z is equals to minus L in these two equations, you will be getting source voltage and source current where we are placing Z is equals to minus L. So your equation will be Vs is equals to Vi into e to the power gamma L plus Vr into e to the power minus gamma L and source current is equals to Ii into e to the power gamma L plus Ir into e to the power minus gamma L. And based on these two equations, we can understand characteristic impedance that is Z0 is equals to Vi by Ii that is equals to minus Vr by Ir. Here one essential thing that you need to understand the characteristic impedance that is Z0 and that will be incident voltage divided by incident current and that can be also calculated based on reflected voltage and reflected current but here there will be negative sign right and in reflection coefficient one should know reflection coefficient is rho and that is Vr by Vi reflected voltage divided by incident voltage and based on current it will be reflected current divided by incident voltage but here there should be negative sign that you need to keep in your mind the signs are very essential right so based on this understanding we can easily understand input impedance that we measure at supply side so let me note down these equations after that I'll derive equation of input impedance that is impedance measured at supply side. So input impedance is an impedance measured at supply end that is a ratio of supply voltage divided by supply current. Here supply voltage is Vs and supply current is Is. So Z in is Vs by Is. Now we need to place Vs and Is. Now for further simplification, I'll be taking Vi common from numerator. So if I take Vi common from numerator, then in bracket, we will be having e to the power gamma L plus Vr by Vi into e to the power minus gamma L. And in denominator, we will be taking 
i i common so i i is common so in bracket we will be having e to the power gamma l plus i r divided by i i into e to the power minus gamma l now if you carefully observe this equation then here vi by ii that is characteristic impedance right vi by ii that is characteristic impedance so z in is z naught into this term where here if you observe we have vr by vi vr by vi that is reflection coefficient rho and ir by ii that is negative of reflection coefficient that one can say so here further equation that will be e to the power gamma l plus vr by vi that is reflection coefficient rho into e to the power minus gamma l and in denominator we will be having e to the power gamma l plus negative of reflection coefficient right so it will be minus rho into e to the power minus gamma l right now we will be considering this equation for further solution using reflection coefficient equation which i have derived in my last video if you have seen that video then in that i have derived reflection coefficient that is zl minus z naught divided by zl plus z naught now i'll be taking that equation as a reference for further simplification Placing gamma is equals to ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL plus Z0, we will be having this equation, and with this equation, we will be taking LCM. So, if you take LCM, this ZL plus Z0 that is getting multiplied with this term, and this ZL plus Z0 that will get cancelled from numerator and denominator, right? So, further solution will be now with this equation. We wanted to have further simplification in terms of sine and cosine. So what I'll be doing is I'll be taking ZL and Z0 terms separately. So here to take ZL and Z0 terms separately, here if you observe carefully, we have ZL with which we have e to the power gamma L and plus e to the power minus gamma L, right? While with Z0, if you observe, here we have e to the power gamma L minus e to the power minus gamma L. That is how terms are there. While in denominator, same thing that we are dealing with to repeat. So here with ZL, if you observe, we have e to the power gamma L and with this e to the power minus gamma l, we have minus zl. So I'm writing minus e to the power minus gamma l, right? And plus z naught is having e to the power gamma l, and here z naught is having minus minus plus e to the power minus gamma l. That is how terms are there with us. For further simplification, I'll be considering lossless transmission line, and for lossless transmission line. There are a few basic things that one should know. For lossless transmission line, attenuation constant alpha is zero, and here gamma, that is propagation constant, that is alpha plus j beta. Here alpha is zero, so you can say gamma is equals to j beta for lossless transmission line. So here I'll be substituting gamma is equals to j beta in this equation. So after substituting this, you can observe we have these terms in form of sine and cosine. So if you replace these terms in form of sine and cosine, then further simplification is possible. Let me explain you the basic equation of sine and cosine. See, one should know sine theta, that is e to the power j theta minus e to the power minus j theta divided by 2j. And if you talk about cos theta, then that is e to the power j theta plus e to the power minus j theta divided by 2. So we'll be using this equation to simplify this equation further. So here what we'll be doing is we'll be replacing 
this e to the power term in form of sin and cosine. So if you observe here e to the power j beta l plus e to the power minus j beta l is there. That can be replaced by cos beta l as per cos theta is equals to e to the power j theta plus e to the power minus j theta by 2. So this term that will be 2 times of cos of beta l plus z naught into e to the power j beta l minus e to the power minus j beta l is there with us. So that can be replaced in form of sine as per this equation. So you can say this will be 2j into sine beta l, right? So that is how we can have further simplification. So here along with zl, we have e to the power j beta l minus e to the power minus j beta l that is 2j into sine beta l and e to the power j beta l plus e to the power minus j beta l that will be 2 times of cos of beta l right now with this equation if you observe carefully see this 2 that is getting cancelled from numerator and denominator right so here further simplification will be based on cos and sine function and here see we have z naught and here we have cos and sine function right and for further simplification if you want this equation in terms of tan beta l then you can take cos beta l common from numerator and denominator so if you take cos beta l common from numerator and denominator that will get cancelled and we will be having zl over here if you take beta l common cos beta l common and over here we have j z naught into sin beta l divided by cos beta l that will be tan beta l and in denominator we will be having cos beta l common so here we will be having z naught and here we will be having j z l into tan beta l right so this is basic equation which is input impedance equation of transmission line but even there is one more version of this equation that is based on normalized load impedance and normalized input impedance so first of all you should know what is normalized load impedance and normalized input impedance the normalized impedance will be as per z in is equals to actual value of z in divided by characteristic impedance and zl will be normalized zl will be actual value of zl divided by z naught that is how one can have normalized value so for normalized input impedance we will be taking z naught over here in denominator so here we will be having normalized input impedance that is z in which is z in divided by z naught right and over here we will be taking z naught common from numerator and denominator so here zl by z0 and here zl by z0 will be there with us so here we will be having normalized zl plus j tan beta l with, is there in numerator and in denominator we will be having 1 plus j normalized zl into n beta l so these two equations are very essential which are equation of input impedance and based on these two equations in future we will be solving many problems as well so you need to remember these two equations for understanding of input impedance of transmission line i hope you have understood this video still if anything that you like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video